Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I will open this up to questions of uh, any and all baseball ops topics. Um, but first, I wanted to uh, announce as uh, the primary occasion for the Zoom call um, that our baseball operations department, after uh, careful deliberation, has decided to pursue modifications to the dimensions of our left field wall um, in advance of 2025 opening day. And um, I believe you will um, be in receipt of uh, some images, some renderings of what this will look like. Um, but long story short, you know, we, we made the uh, change between the 2021 and 2022 seasons um, as we were trying to pursue a more neutral, but also more pitcher friendly array at Camden Yards. And we were doing so under uh, the uh, time constraints of a single off season and um, you know, seeking a way to make our, at that time, extremely Homer prone park uh, more neutral and uh, perhaps uh, erring to the side of pitcher friendliness. And um, given the uncertainties of the game, offensive environments, uh, et cetera, it became clear to us and uh, me and our staff, our coaches, our players, the feedback that we received over three years of lived experience that um, it was a directionally correct move, but we overcorrected. And once you know, we came to the decision that that was the case, I decided that this is something we wanted to address as soon as possible. And we've developed a plan to uh, seek a happier medium for these dimensions prior to 2025. So our hope is by pulling uh, the dimensions in a little bit, and in some areas it will be as much as 20 feet, and others it will be more like 11 feet, um, and, and as little as, um, as nine, that um, you know, we will be able to uh, get closer to what our original goal was, was a neutral playing environment um, that that assists a, a balanced style of play at a park that was overly homer friendly prior to our changes in 2022. Um, that is now a little overly skewed, given what we did um, back then. And, you know, we're seeking a more neutral playing environment, but this is one that we still think. Um, will assist the uh, the pitching environment here at Camden Yards relative to where it was, but be a little uh, less draft drastic, particularly as it pertains to our right-handed hitters. So um, I think this is something that I know our hitters are obviously going to be excited about. Uh, the pitchers will be less excited, but um, you know we, we're we're thinking that uh, you know this will. Uh, improve uh, the overall style of play and uh, can, and retain some of the benefits from the changes that we made um, while discarding some of the extremities. Thank you, Mike. Uh, media, um, if you guys have questions, please put your name in the chat. We will get started with Rich. Hey, uh, Mike, uh, do you think that this will this will help you in the uh, in the free agent market? This uh, th this off season in attracting, uh, you know, in, in attracting right-handed hitters. Yeah, that, that, I, I, that's not a reason that we're doing it. Um, you know, in in in, in, in man, many ways, this may uh, make the park less attractive for pitchers, which was one of the reasons that I initially made this change. Um, um, I think that a byproduct of this will be that the extremities of the park won't be so skewed against right-handed bats. And that was an unintended consequence of um, us trying to just, you know, our, our, the right field area of our park um, where uh, the flag court is and the warehouse, that's, that's a very hitter friendly uh, dimension. And so in order to pursue what we were hoping was a uh, more neutral overall environment for the park, the method that we used back in 2021, 2022 was to push the left field area back most drastically. And that's where um, we had more than our fair share of homers the most in Camden Yards. It was also the area that we could modify uh, easily and realistically in one off season. And so we did, 
Um, but we overcorrected and we, the, the um, offensive environment shifted a little bit and we got more than, than we bargained for. And, you know, it's, it's something that, you know, we, we modify and adjust and we think it's too far right now. And this is a change that I made and that we made. And, um, you know, we're hoping, as I said, to seek a little happier medium after these changes. Now, um, our goal is to have a balanced style of play, a more neutral park um, than where we started, but then also where we ended up with these changes. And I think we saw a lot of good benefits. Um, the team, the, the pitching program, got off the ground uh, as, as a, perhaps a byproduct of us uh, alleviating some of the pressures on our pitchers. Um, it coincided with the team entering a winning phase. Um, but as I've been saying for years, you know, it's something we were going to keep an eye on. Don't think it was perfect. Didn't think it was permanent. Um, and we're deciding to make this change currently. And I'm very hopeful this is going to be better. Next question is from Andy Koska. Hey, Mike, thanks for doing this. Uh, I'm curious, how much discussion do you have with, with hitters, especially right-handed hitters on your current roster when, when discussing whether to make this change? Well, our coaches and me and all of us around the team, I and mean, we talk to these guys all the time and we live with them on a daily basis. And you know, this isn't the kind of thing that we call a meeting for, but um, the the feedback consistently was that the extremity of, of the, the disparity in the park um, was a little bit more of a topic of conversation than we had bargained for. Uh, you know, we didn't, we didn't like the degree to which, you know, this had become a distraction in, in many ways. I know that the pitchers enjoyed it, but uh, for our hitters, for our right-handed hitters in particular, for our, our left-handed hitters too, um, aspects of this were a little severe. So um, as you see with uh, the new intended dimensions, um, it retains some of the depth in left field, a good bit of it. This will be um, much more fair and favorable to the pitchers than the original dimensions of Camden Yards, um, but clearly it's a lot uh, less severe, and I think um, I'm hopeful that this will uh, strike the right balance. Just a reminder to enter your name in the chat if you have a question for Mike. Uh, next will be Matt. Hey, Mike. Um, it's my understanding that MLB instituted the league-wide rule to require humidors with the baseball at the same time that you guys made the changes. Did Do you feel like that had any effect on maybe making the effects of the wall change a bit more drastic or, or not? You know, I, I, I don't know uh, the science well enough on, on ball conditions and the humidors as to whether that had a direct impact, but suffice to say that our – calculations which we knew were going to you know miss the mark and be faulty just because of how unpredictable offensive environments can be and equipment changes can be um you know it it was the the offensive environment dipped a little bit in the years where we moved the wall back more than we had calculated for and uh you know it, it was noticeable to me you know watching the, the last few years here um the, the the large wall played a lot differently in the less humid months versus the more humid summer months. At times, it it did strike the right balance. Um, at times, it was way too difficult to uh, get over the wall when there was low humidity in the atmosphere. And um, you know, the, this we're just trying to to modify and adjust and get it right so that um, the balance style play that we're shooting for. Um, is uh, more on the mark. Next question is from Steve. A uh, quick non-wall question. Coming out of the uh, GM meetings, how, how did you see free agency going so far, Mike, and how's it going for the Orioles? Have you made any offers or do you anticipate making any soon? I've been very active. Um, I'll, I'll leave it at that. I've been talking to a lot of people. I think we have a, a clear idea of um, the types of player profiles that we're seeking. Um, as I've said, I, I think that uh, our new ownership group and David Rubenstein um, has enabled us to be in a position to be very organized and prepared. And as soon as uh, free agency opened during the GM meetings, we've been in a position to show people that we're very serious about bringing players in and um, a lot of conversations ongoing right now, obviously hasn't been a, a super level of activity thus far. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think as the days tick by into November and we get 
closer to the holidays and closer to the winter meetings, we'll see activity pick up. And I think um, we're going to be uh, active and, and competitive. Hey, Grill. Hey, Mike, you said getting more right-handed power was going to be a priority. I mean, is that even more of a priority now because of the wall change, just because you want to add more of those kind of profiles to your lineup with, because of this change? Um, well, I think, I look, I think it'll uh, be easier for right-handed hitters to produce power numbers at this park. There's no question about it. And I'm sure, you know, you, you could name the guys on our team that are probably the happiest about this news. Um, that'll be helpful. Um but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I look at our um, current outfield mix um, with guys that we know are returning for sure. And it's a very left-handed mix and um, we'll be seeking some right-handed players uh, to balance that out. We'll see what happens. We'll see where it goes. Um, we've got a lot of possibilities on that front. Um, but, you know, I, I, I think that we want it, we want it and we want a park that is neutral, tilting towards pitcher friendliness, but the um, the disparities between the two sides of the park um, were were uh, not the intent, and it had created some dramatic differences, and it affected um, you know per player personnel uh, thought and outcomes in a way that we weren't anticipating when we made the move. And so um, you know I'm glad uh, you know we're trying to um, improve the just the competitive state of the franchise at that time and try to find a way to have consistently quality winning baseball here in Baltimore, here in the American League East. We felt that the prior dimensions were harmful for that. I think history bore it out. Um, but that doesn't mean that we're going to be stubborn if, you know, we, we uh, overshoot the mark on something. So I'm um, um, recognizing it and uh, taking this opportunity to adjust. But I do think this will um, just over time, help us with pitchers, with right-handed hitters, everyone. And I, I hope this lands on a, a, a spot where our park dimensions are not a topic for player recruitment because they had been in um, different directions before this change, but then also after this change. Next is Andy. Hey, Mike. I'm curious, just a quick um... Injury update on a couple guys. Uh, how's how's Grayson Rodriguez? Um, are there any um, you know new injuries we should we should know about operations this offseason for for anybody uh, on a, maybe on the forty man? Um, no, there's nothing new. Um, some of the some of the lingering issues and in the uh, end of the year, Grayson in particular has resolved and he'll be um, you know assuming uh, assuming smooth sailing from here, be a full blown. Uh, uh, member and citizen in, in spring training. We're hopeful for a normal spring training, healthy full season from him. You know, that was a muscle strain and it's, it's finally dissipated. Colton Kowser's hand surgery went really well. Um, he's going to be in great shape and uh, the rehabs continue to truck along well. Jorge Mateo, who were, um, I, you know, I think he was an underrated absence for us in the second half. And, uh, you know, he had, he had a reconstructive elbow surgery um, whether he's a hundred percent full go on the very, very first day of spring training is still TBD, but suffice to say, he's going to have a very full, um, if not 162 games, something close to that season. So he's really somebody that we're able to plan around fully more or less in, um, 2025. And that hasn't changed anyone else I can mention or I could, uh, that I didn't mention. And you want to touch on, I'm happy to. Oh, I guess Wells and, and Bradish. Who's that? Uh, Wells and Bradish. I mean, they're probably ways off, but I imagine just an update, if you don't mind. Yeah, we're expecting a mid-season return from those guys in some way, shape, or form. I think it's too early for me to specify a month, but the surgeries went well. Uh, knock on wood, the rehabs are uh, on schedule or better right now, and at this time, um, nothing new to report other than continued good news with the passage of time and um, you know, continue to bank on some kind of mid-season return um, for both of those guys. Rich, go ahead. Hey, yeah, Mike, uh, with your uh, with your revamp batting uh, hitting hitting coaches, do you look at a, a change in in philosophy? Maybe tilt a little more to, towards small ball, uh, or do you think that the the team's hitting philosophy is is going to be about the same? I think and I made comments, I think, 
to this um, to this effect uh, last time I talked. But look, overall, um, we have an offensive uh, philosophy and a um, a group of hitting coaches throughout the organization um, that are at the top of their field. That are um, you know, we had a, a, a top five offense in a lot of ways this year, despite the the funk that the that the team went into and that the lineup went into in the second half with a lot of injuries. Um, you know, we still rate among the very top offenses. As you can see, there are teams um, very eager to hire hidden coaches from us. And, um, you know, this is something generally that remains a strength of this organization. But as I said, as soon as the season ended, um, and just like I'm doing here um, with this press conference about the park, like we're always improving, modifying, adjusting. This is a game of evolution. I think there are areas that we can emphasize better, that we can find a better blend, and we're doing that. And we're going to have uh, uh, discussions and meetings throughout the organization all winter on ways in which we can retain the best, best aspects of our current program, but uh, refine and tweak areas where – you know, we think we can get a little bit smarter and a little bit better. And um, I think overall, the theme for baseball right now is, um, you know, there, there are, are so much, um, there's so much knowledge and science that goes into uh, hitters perfecting their swings, but sort of, um, you know, meeting, meeting that with uh, ways to adjust runs, one's approach in certain game situations, certain counts, certain scores. Uh, and just refining the whole program. But overall, we're very proud and happy of our hitting development and overall hitting program. But um, And I, I think that the uh, results and um, the way that the uh, industry is respecting our personnel speaks to that, but there is always room for improvement, and we're spending this entire winter trying to get the whole organization better. And look, we're going to have to keep doing that forever. Jacob Meyer? Hey, Mike, to, to follow up on that, is, is one of the areas where you guys can improve offensively is in the department of, of getting on base, of, of drawing walks. It was an area that wasn't as good in 24 as it, as it was in 23. I know the power numbers were up a lot, but is there a way that – is that an area where you guys think you can improve is, is walks? Yeah, I think we had some uh, individual players that, you know, their walk totals weren't where they were, um, and, uh, you know, we're hopeful to see some of that improve. You know, the, the offense was uh, uh, more aggressive this year in terms of its um, just characterizing the stats that it, that it put up. Um, some of that is um, variation year over year, and it'll, it'll, it, without doing anything, we might see some of those numbers switch um but yeah we want to we want to emphasize you know we've got a, a bunch of guys that have the ability to see the ball well control the strike zone have demonstrated a lot of walking ability um if not in the major leagues in the minors and uh you know that that's been a big pillar of um uh, the success that i've been around in baseball dating all the way back to uh starting my career with the st louis cardinals scouting department and so we do want to keep an eye on that. Um, you know, I don't think that was necessarily something that had been intentionally throttled down this season. And look, pitchers are throwing nastier stuff than ever. And it's um, a little bit more imperative than ever to swing and hit a pitch that you think you can hit because um, there's you don't get that many chances in today's games with, with um, how hard and how nasty the stuff guys are throwing are. But um, you know, we're, we're, we want to walk, we want to drive up pitch counts, uh, we want to have good swing decisions and things like that. And, um, you know, we're going to uh, examine the degree of emphasis that we put on on some of these um, topics all winter and, and um, come away with a good plan for a better 2025. But I look, we're, I, I think that the, we're in a good spot, um, but we don't want to be complacent and there are areas for improvement. Andy? This is a cosmetic question, so I apologize for not asking an architect this. Um, if you don't know, totally fine. Uh, do you plan to add seats to the, the – is the walls coming in, or will there be seats in that area, or will there be kind of a gap between where the seats are and where that new wall is? There, there won't be any seats affected by this change. Um, so, and I don't know whether uh, – do they have the the um, 
graphic yet? Yes. We, we do. Yeah. You'll see there is now a, a flat platform for uh, Mr. Splash to do his thing. And, um, it, the, but there aren't any seat modifications. So anyone who has a seat in that part of the ballpark will not be um, affected by this, nor will we be adding seats as a result of this change. Next up is Matt. Mike, with Felix progressing uh, as expected, are you going into next season planning for him to resume his closer role, ninth inning role, right away or are you looking to kind of supplement that with with some other high-end uh relief talent on the free agent market or trade market just as you kind of maybe ease him back into the felix that you know he can be yeah well uh very exciting to have felix batista back i mean he's a star for this team he's one of the best closers in the league um the the rehab continues to go to plan i think he's going to be a, a major contributor in the back end of the bullpen all season long. And uh, we're excited about that. We are realistic about the fact that he's coming off of surgery. We don't want to overly pressurize him. We are going to want to treat him with a little extra care, uh, given the fact that he didn't pitch last year and he's coming off of a surgery. So way too soon to announce roles and things like that. But, um, and I think it's just going to be a matter of how sharp he is. Um, but we, we want to give them the, the margin for error that a guy coming off of surgery deserves. So um, we'll let him and his readiness um, speak to roles and uh, leverage and things like that. But uh, this may be a gradual return. It may not. Um, so, you know, I don't think we're there yet. We do have a good, uh, I think, a good bullpen to start the offseason with. You look at the returning guys and names and there's a lot of above average relievers in there and I thought um Sir Anthony Dominguez was coming back did a, did a great job after the deadline uh pitching at the end of games for us it's really nice to have him back um you know Cano's been a a mainstay and a rock out there and and then um you know we have the the lefties uh so we we've got a good start we will um you know certainly be examining bullpen opportunities throughout the offseason um, but at this, at this time, uh, you know, we're, we're, uh, not making any, any firm commitments or, or plans toward, um, what types of investments or profiles we're, we're looking at in the bullpen. Next question is from John Mioli. Mike, understanding that, you know, you have in, in Gunner, Henderson, and Jordan Westberg, there are a couple all-stars on that side of the infield, and there's a lot of good candidates at second base. As you're looking at off-season needs and potential free agents trades, would you consider adding an infielder and, and moving one of those players who's ticketed for the infield if the opportunity and, and, and the fit is right? I think that uh, um, consider is a good word. I mean, you're, you're always considering things. Um, the way I think about the off-season and, um, you know, the – the uh, budget that we may be working towards, the opportunity cost that's involved in, in investing in some areas over others is infield looks to me like less of an area of need right now than our pitching staff, our starting rotation in particular, and then our outfield right now with you know one of our best players um, in, in a free agent process essentially at the moment um, from the outfield um, with the same for one of our best pitchers last year. You know, those are those are areas that are a little more pressing. Um, whereas in the infield, we're not experiencing um, really, really much loss. And uh, also, you know, we have Mateo back healthy. That was a absence for much of the second half. We had Westberg back healthy. He was an absence for much of the second half. So um, I think it's down on the priority list right now, but um, I'll see what opportunities present themselves. And, you know, you can always use more help in every area, but, uh, you know, to me, I've got to make priorities and that's not the priority at the moment. Steve Molesky. Mike, with uh, Roki Sasaki expressing that he wants to come to Major League Baseball, certainly a very unique situation. And I don't know if teams are terming it, they're going to recruit him or how, you know, whatever they would call it but when the time comes do the orioles have interest there thanks steve i can't touch any any particular names um right now that's a that's a a, a no-go so um you know we like talented young pitchers and um you know that, that that's always something that's interesting any team 
Matt, next question. Mike, you, you touched on the pitching staff a little bit before, but in terms of the rotation, obviously uh, losing Corbin Burns, a one-of-one a -of -one type pitcher, uh, would you say all options are kind of on the table for how you might address the pitching staff? Are you looking at the top of the market, but also potentially uh, backfilling it from the other way, internal options? Uh, what, what would you say is kind of on the table for you at the, this point in time? Yeah, I think I think we are. I I think we are uh, looking at the the whole menu, the whole spectrum, and I um, you know I'd credit the uh, the ownership change toward uh, putting us in a position to, to do that. As I've said, it doesn't you know mean um, that we are going to spend money indiscriminately this off season, come hell or high water. Um, you know we're going to make uh, or we're going to seek good. Um, Town evaluation, good long-term investments for the team. Um, we're trying to keep a healthy franchise for a really long time. But I think if you're running a team optimally, which is the word I've been focused on, uh, you're certainly uh, wanting to keep the whole menu of player acquisition open. And that involves um, high-end free agent deals over many years. And um, we've been engaged in those conversations already.